Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do another response uh, to this video. Again, we believe in recovering fumbles. <laughs> All right, if we're going to link this to a, a sport, as Paul did at times, linking this walk, this thing of ours to uh, particular, you know, worldly sports, well, you know, you have particular men who, uh, you know, when they have the ball in their hand, you know, when they're met with contact, all right, or they, they make a move, they'll drop the ball, all right, and those who are on the defense, as I used to play football, um, you you jump you jump on the ball or you scoop it and you run and score the ball you score the touchdown all right scoop and score is what they call it so when we see these uh guys make these mistakes <laughs> all right we liken it into fumbles and we recover the fumble okay and that's what we're gonna do here uh with this guy Bishop Melchizedek and that's a hell of a name to call yourself uh but anyway. Uh, I'm going to play an excerpt from this video done by the Elder Apostle Gabar. Edification, exhortation, as you can see here, is the name of the channel, as I've highlighted it. Subscribe and be edified. Um, Bishop Melchizedek, you are, you are not welcome here. You are a persona non grata. Okay, and uh, I'm going to play this video, and pretty much what you're going to get from this guy is that the throne of David has nothing to do with Yahweh Shai's kingdom. That was just a thing in the past. All right, and um, Yahweh Shai's kingdom is just that, and it has nothing to do with the throne of David. Now, mind you, this guy is all over particular men who were kicked out of Great Millstone's comment board, and they accept him, okay? which what you've noticed is these, you know, ungodly alliances, these men don't even agree with each other, all right? So that's why it's going to come to naught. That's why it is coming to naught. But um, let's play this fumble, all right, and let's, let's, let's scoop and score so that the flock can be edified because you have far too many men teaching the Bible, all right, without a solid foundation of our history, OK, and who really don't know what the hell they're talking about. And we don't say that out of pride. We say that because the fact that this man is saying this shows that he should not be teaching the Bible. He should be sitting his ass down somewhere, listening, taking notes and being built up in the milk of the scriptures. OK, as the scriptures say, when you when you desire to be a teacher, you you, you have to. What? You have to be taught, but you have to be what? A master of the milk before you can get into the meat. Okay? So you must understand topics like we're getting ready to go into. All right? Because it's very important to what's happening today. As all 12 tribes are being raised up and gathered, which is a fulfillment of Amos the ninth chapter, the tabernacle of David will be raised up. OK, as in the days of old, which it wasn't just Judah. All right. It was all 12 tribes. Let's listen to this fumble. Excuse me. Name of the topic, giving all praise to you. How about Shemel Shabbat Man, this guy, Bishop Melchizedek. Man, this dude. I mean, he's an Israelite and everything, but he's he's off, man. He ain't he ain't part of the hey. The scripture said, um, what, what, and, and what I'm, I'm thinking of four or five scriptures at the same time. The main scripture is, uh, how can how can two walk together unless they agree? Uh, Amos, uh, the third chapter. This guy shouldn't be in our circle. Now he's. He's forward in his, in his saying. Now, let me see if I can bring this back. He made a statement. Let me just put this on. This is live right now. I'll make this short. 
the rise of the house of david uh 65 watching now starting uh streaming eight minutes ago this is gms last stand which is a record possible records a, a page uh let me see uh okay where's this guy at? okay i believe Apostle God, uh, Apostle God mentioned King David somewhere, somewhere or another. So this guy, Bishop Melchizedek, the house of David is just a contextual meaning that it notes to the southern kingdom and those who obey the order according to the Most High set up from the history in Scripture. You heard that? He said that the king, the, the, the tabernacle of David is just history dealing with the southern kingdom let's, let's go back now he's reading the comment so his words are there i tried to zoom in on it okay but brother saw it let's listen again okay let's listen again to make sure we ain't crazy remember apostle tahar is reading his comment and this is a man who goes out on the highways and the byways this is a man who follows men who were kicked out of gms Okay, and they, they, they give him Godspeed, but listen to what he believes about the tabernacle of David. Let's listen. I believe Apostle God, uh, Apostle God mentioned King David somewhere or somewhere another. So this guy, Bishop Melchizedek, the house of David is just a contextual meaning that it notes to the southern kingdom and those who obey the order according to the most high set up from the history in scripture nothing special our king is yahweh not david so i come in and that guy is totally off that statement that he just made which elder Pasatar read the statement he made on Elder Apostle Rakar's uh, channel, his live feed. That statement, that guy who calls himself Bishop Melchizedek made is totally off. Absolutely is off. It's a damn shame you would, uh, as an Israelite, are speaking such nonsense. <laughs> First of all, it wasn't just all right, the southern kingdom. All right, now at first, it was just Judah. And we'll show you the 11, other 11 tribes, all right, will follow in, in Saul's stead and those who, who, who issued forth from that order, all right? But after seven and a half years, okay, all 12 tribes acknowledge King David, you see? And that's the tabernacle of David. Solomon forwarded that government Okay, for a period of 40 years. Okay, now before that, David ruled, okay, as king under all 12 tribes for 33 years. Okay, now when you get Amos, the ninth chapter, it talks about how the tabernacle of David is going to be built as in the days of old, because since Solomon's uh, uh, fall, all 12 tribes have been what? Broken, separated, scattered. So the gathering that's happening here in Babylon the Great and the four corners of the earth, wherever we're scattered, is that tabernacle, all right, both northern and southern kingdom coming back together in preparation to be delivered. All right, now let's get the book of Luke. Okay, since you believe in Yahweh Shai, 1 and 31. Okay, this is what the angel told Mary. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Okay, you're going to eventually lay with Joseph. Okay, and the seed that's going to be conceived in your womb via the egg, right? You're going to bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. This is before they had come together fully, all right, via sex. It says, and he shall be great 
and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Okay? Which is all 12 tribes. Okay? And that's fulfilled in what? The 144,000. Okay? And then after that, you have the large multitude. Okay? It's all 12 tribes. How in the hell are you teaching the Bible with this nonsense? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom shall be no end. Now, this was promised to David. All right. Via Nathan, the prophet. OK, when you get the book. I'm sure, it'll link you to it. You got first Chronicles 17. Let's see here. Oh, they didn't link it. <clears throat> Maybe they'll link it here. Yep, well, we'll just get 2 Samuel. This was what was told to David. 2 Samuel 7 and 12. Okay, I'll just get to the point. This is Nathan speaking to David. The Lord told Nathan to say this to David. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And we know, ultimately, Solomon established the kingdom. But this is what lets you know that this is a future prophecy, all right, of a particular seed that would issue forth from his line, all right, as Solomon will come back. And he shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, Solomon established David's throne, okay, for a period of 40 years. And that was all 12 tribes in agreeance, okay? Because here, when you get 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter, okay, David became king over all Israel, okay? At first, it wasn't even all of the southern kingdom. What the hell are you talking about? At first, it was only Judah, <laughs> Oh, my goodness, man. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron. All right. And spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone. OK. And thy flesh also in time past when when Saul was king over us. All right. Thou was he that lettest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel. And thou shalt be captain over Israel. Okay, so all the elders of Israel came to king uh, to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron. All right, as he there for seven and a half years, he was just ruling over Judah, and they anointed David king over Israel, not just Judah. David was thirty years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years, 40 years in total, seven and a half in Hebron and close to 33 in Jerusalem. Listen, in Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over Israel and Judah. So let's go back and listen to this, this, this slip up one more time and then we'll get some more edification. Let me see if I can bring this back. He made a statement. And I just put this on. This is live right now. I'll make this short. The rise of the house of David. Uh, 65 watching now started uh, streaming eight minutes ago. This is GMS Last Stand, which is a record. Possible records a, a page. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, where is this guy? Okay. I believe... Apostle God, uh, Apostle God mentioned King David somewhere, somewhere or another. So this guy, Bishop Melchizedek, the house of David is just a contextual meaning that denotes to the southern kingdom and those who obey the order according to the Most High set up 
from the history in scripture. What did I come in at? So I come in and I say, David is the earthly king. So he comes back. No, he is not. The house I will rule, will rule you. You're gonna have to show scripture to her. Now, see this. Now this guy's been around for years. He's. No, I gotta stop it right there. He's wrong. Okay. Again, we're gonna get this history here. First, David. Okay. Let's see here. First David reigned over just Judah. All right, now let's read this history here. Okay, and to just say that the tabernacle of David has nothing to do with the Messiah's kingdom, okay, you're 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 overthrowing prophecy. That was an oath swore to David. Psalms one thirty two and eleven. The Lord have sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set up thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit up on thy throne. All right. Forevermore. All right. King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay. The tabernacle of David is a government that's going to be established by Yahweh again. All right. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born and a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder, showing you he's the high priest because the high priest bore the ephod and he put, you know, the, the two latches on his shoulder and it bore the, the 12 stones on his chest, which represented all 12 tribes of Israel. OK. And it says in the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor the mighty power, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Okay. And he is a father. Okay. With the, 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 the elect period of fathers and father in ancient term meant what? All right. The, 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 uh, master of a particular trade. All right. He's the master. He's the father of righteousness. All right. And that authority was given unto him by his father. Okay. The son of God and the sons of God. OK, and he's the prince of peace of the increase of his government. There shall in peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. So has this guy, does this guy know the Bible? Has he been reading? Or is he just somebody out there talking shit? Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. And to establish it with judgment and with justice, okay, from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of Yahweh, all right, the Lord of hosts, will perform this. Okay? So what in the hell are you talking about? It's far too many people who don't know what the hell they're talking about, man. And the fact that you would openly put that on the comment board shows that you, 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 really, you really don't need to load no more videos. You don't need to comment no more. You just need to sit your ugly ass down somewhere and shut up. This is the history. There's a, a, a website I use, David, king of Judah. This is the history. Then he became king of, over Israel. Then he went and got the Ark of the Covenant. This is history you should all know. Okay? But... Sometimes we need to tighten up on the history, so I'm going to just read this real quick. It says, David, king of Judah, now that King Saul was dead, David was out of danger. Calling for his priest, he asked Yahweh if he should return to Israel, and Yahweh said he should go to Hebron. All right, now, when you hear that kings asked of Yahweh, they went to the priest, okay, and the priest gave them direction, all right, on what to do. OK, and the Lord said he should go to Hebron. All right. A town in Judah. All right. And the priest board, the, you know, they had the, the Urim and the Thurim and all of that. And they would give the king's direction. It says there at Hebron, 
the local leaders of the tribe of Judah. It wasn't just it wasn't the southern kingdom. Let's get that understood. It's just the tribe was just the tribe of Judah first. So the local leaders of the tribe of Judah in Hebron, okay, agreed to make David their king. Okay, and you can read this in 2 Samuel, the second chapter, and the third chapter, if you want that history. The other 11 tribes of Israel, however, followed Saul's right-hand man, Abner, who made Saul's son, Ish-bosheth, their king. Okay? And so during this time, there was an ongoing war between the two halves, Israel and Judah. Okay? But really, you had just the tribe of Judah. Okay? And you had the rest of the 11 tribes. Okay? Uh, uh, it, was, it was a division. Okay? Under David's powerful leadership, Judah grew stronger and stronger. Under Ishbosheth's in incompetence, Israel grew weaker and weaker. Okay? At Lent, Abner grew impatient with Ishbosheth's weakness. After one particularly offensive incident, Abner decided to withdraw his support from Ishbosheth and campaign to make David king of Israel. Abner sent a message to David expressing his intentions. David needed to find out if Abner was influential enough to be useful or not. To this end, David replied that he would work with Abner under one condition. King Saul, in order to hurt David, had given David's first wife, Michal, all right, to another man. David demanded that Abner return her to him. If Abner couldn't extract a princess, he obviously was unable to move a kingdom. So this was a power move by David, right? Abner did this with ease. However, and so he and David met to plan their work. Abner had already lobbied throughout Israel, having built a network of local leaders who would transfer their support to David on Abner's signal. Okay? Their plans made, Abner set out for home. All right? However, David's nephew, Joab, who was now his right-hand man, was furious over David's meeting with Abner. Joab and Abner had been at war for some time now. And Joab was suspicious of Abner. Beyond that, he held a grudge because Abner had killed Joab's brother in battle. Okay? <laughs> so now, Joab secretly chased Abner and murdered him. So his efforts to make uh, David king of Israel ended. Okay? David becomes king of Israel. When Abner was assassinated, King Ishbosheth and Israel were thrown into panic and confusion. Ishbosheth was incompetent and Abner had run things all along. Now Israel was leaderless. Two of Ishbosheth's men conspired and murdered him. They were tired of him. He had been king two years. The assassins fled to David, expecting him to reward them for eliminating his enemy. But like Saul's would-be killer, they thought like people in their culture, okay, and not like David. He had them executed as common murderers, showing you David was upright, okay? He was an upright man. He had his faults, but his, his heart was right. His mind was right. He was... He was he, he wanted to wait on the Lord's judgment. He didn't want to take things in his own hands because he was emotional about things that, that, that people were doing to him. It says, early in David's reign, he made his goal to capture Jerusalem, a splendid city which throughout the center of Israel's territory was occupied by hostile foreigners, the Philistines, so forth. It says, who arrogantly considered their city impregnable. David was determined, however, 
an advanced and an advanced party of his men snuck into the city via drainage culvert and Jerusalem was taken. <laughs> David made it his capital. See, Jerusalem became a capital, meaning what? They were sovereign, okay, and they, they established a government. See, what we're teaching you is that this very government that was established back then, all right, which entailed all Israel, as we'll show you, that's going to be established again in an even better fashion. Okay? And David will have his position as king. All right? But who's going to establish it? Yahweh Shai. Just as Solomon established his throne for 40 years, okay, uh, Yahweh Shai is going to establish his throne forever. Okay? David made it his capital. Let's look up the word capital. What does a capital mean? Okay. One second. It says, and remained so as long as the Israelites occupied that land. It says, a capital city or town, the most uh, important city or town of a country or region, usually its seat of government and administrative center. Okay. That's all we need to know. That's why the scripture always talks about we're going to return all right, to that land. Remember, this is the very land, okay, that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is that land, okay? That is the headquarters of the kingdom, Jerusalem. You see? That's where Solomon reigned for 40 years, okay? But it was that region. As a matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Let's get Let me show you something. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, this is 1 Kings 4 and tw 21. It says, And Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines, okay, unto the border of Egypt, all right, and they brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. Now, this land... When you get a precept, this was that land that what was promised to Abraham, Genesis 15 and 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, all right, the river Euphrates. So it's a particular landmass that is known as the headquarters, and that's the Garden of Eden, with Jerusalem being at the forefront. See that? That's the land we're going to return to in the kingdom. Okay? Let's get Ezekiel 37. See that? Ezekiel 37. Let's just get straight to the point. See? Reunion of Judah and Israel. That's the tabernacle of David being rebuilt. See? As a matter of fact, we'll get that in a minute. Let's go back to the biography and just read this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. All right. We'll go. Yep. Right here. David made it his capital. Jerusalem became the capital. That's the government. And it remained so as long as the Israelites occupied the land. Okay, and when were they kicked out of the land? After Solomon's sin. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, they were still there, but ultimately they were split. They were no longer one after that. Okay, and from that point you had particular kings. Some did good and some did bad. The majority did bad for the southern kingdom and for the northern kingdom. None of them did good. One did all right. Okay. But uh, we can show you that in just a minute. It says, David's rise to national power shocked the Philistines into action, where they were all aware of his history of military exploits against their invasions of Israel. They launched two major campaigns with the objective of killing David and leaving the throne, all right, in less capable hands. See? 
Both times, however, using military strategy supplied by Yahweh, David defended his borders, inflicting heavy casualties among the Philistines. Okay, David's military prowess became legendary. He converted many nearby nations from aggressors and subdued vassalages, meaning he took down the heathen. By the end of his life, his empire was so powerful that there was peace, and his son Solomon never had to fight a war. Okay, and then you go into the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, once the Ark of the Covenant was brought back to Jerusalem, okay, it ultimately that was, he established the kingdom. Okay, he had a celebration, he was happy. Okay, let's read this a little bit of this. David's long life, love was Yahweh. His years of exile were so painful, not because of uh, privation, but because he was banished from public services of worship to Yahweh. All right, he was on a run from Saul and all of that. When he became king, his greatest joy and his most memorable contribution was elaborating Yahweh's worship. Okay, once Jerusalem became David's capital, he determined to establish public worship there. Okay, and what do you think we're going to do when we get the kingdom? Okay, <laughs> we're going to set up order, man. First, the, the, the land has to be cleaned up. All of those idols have to be taken out. So you heathen are going to be put to work. Okay, but anyway, it says with reform methods and grand scale, one of his first goals in his uh, regard was to bring the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh to Jerusalem. Okay. This was an artifact built at Yahweh's command in Moses' day. Throughout Israel's history, Yahweh resided on the ark. See? And in the kingdom, the scriptures say we're not going to even look for the ark anymore because he's going to reside in us. And that, that's a, 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 a lesson we can go into dealing with the rebuilding of the third temple. What is it? Is it a physical temple we're going to rebuild? No. But we'll get to that. In the form of a bright glowing presence, that's how the Lord resided over the ark. All right, which that we know that was through his word. Okay. The, his angel, it says, hanging in midair above the ark. Between the two angels, okay, sculpted on its surface. Sometimes the glowing was so bright it filled the area even occasionally driving worshipers back with its splendor. So imagine that. Imagine that, man. <laughs> David hosted an elaborate celebration. Okay, I'm going to just read this all because we all, we, we need to know this. David hosted an elaborate celebration, okay, to accompany, all right, and what we just read about, you know, David being a kingdom, you can see, this is where you read about that at 2 Samuel 4, 5, 8, 10, 1 Chronicles 11, 1 through 9, 8, you know, 1 through 19, and 19, okay? And the Chronicles is just pretty much the Acts of David, but it doesn't mention uh, the bad parts as Samuel does. It doesn't mention too many of the bad parts. Um, just pretty much gives you a chronicle of what was happening in his, the good the good parts. <laughs> um, it says, David hosted an elaborate celebration to accompany the great moment the ark was ushered into Jerusalem. Okay. The whole nation gathered to the accompanied. But you got to understand, we've been fighting to get into this land and rule <laughs> since we were led out of Egypt, but we kept falling. Okay, the, 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 you know, going off, then the Lord set up judges, then we cry for a king, okay, and, and here we are now as a nation. We finally get a government, all, right, all of that toiling and laboring, <laughs> and it only lasts 40 years. But that's all right, you know, under Yahweh Shah, it's going to be forever. This is our history, though. You got to know this. It says, David hosted an elaborate Celebration to accompany the great moment the ark was ushered into Jerusalem. Okay, that's when he was dancing and, and his rod came out and the, the woman got mad. The whole nation gathered 
Okay? All 12 tribes. Uh, Bishop Melchizedek. I want to call you something else, man. To the uh, a, accompaniment of a marching band. That's the first thing David set up was a choir. <laughs> To uh to what to what to, to sing praises to the Lord he was he wanted to do that badly he ain't been able to do that openly all these years he's like let's get it let's party the procession began the ark itself was on a newly built cart drawn by oxen a handful of Levi men of Levi the tribe made responsible by, by God for religious affairs walked alongside. Foolishly, however, no one had inquired about the proper handling of this most sacred symbol of the Lord's presence. <laughs> the Levites were to carry the ark on their shoulders, never touching it, but raising it above upon the poles loosely attached to the ark. Violation of these regulations was punishable by death. But they were so happy, you know, just happy to get the kingdom uh, started. No one had bothered to read Yahweh's regulations. Instead of carrying the ark as prescribed, they followed the example of the Philistines, placing it on the cart. Then, one of the then at one climactic moment, the oxen stumbled. The cart was upset, and the ark was in danger of falling on the ground. One of the Levites named Uzzah, okay, reached out to steady the ark. Ignoring the prohibition against touching it, for this offense, the Lord instantly struck him dead. That was probably Bishop Melchizedek. Suddenly, the great celebration ended. The people became somber, quiet likely. At first, no one knew why Uzziah was dead until someone remembered Yahweh's law about the ark. At first, David was furious with Yahweh. <laughs> He canceled the celebration and sent the people home. He left the ark in the in the care of a Levite who lived nearby, afraid of what might happen if he dared to continue to Jerusalem. After a time, David got over his anger and dismay, learning that the ark's new host was prospering. Okay, he took it as a sign the Lord would bless him if he renewed his attempt to bring the ark to Jerusalem. Okay. This time he took great care. The, the Levites handling the ark, hundreds of men were fully trained in their duties. Again, the nation was invited for celebration. This was intense. King David had a gift for every citizen, okay, present, adding to the ju 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 jubilation. They were happy. The event was a great success, and David's love for Yahweh was contagious infecting his people too they were they, they were the fear of the lord was spreading throughout israel they were happy there was a sad note though <laughs> an argument between david and his wife michal during the celebration he had danced vigorously and she noticed other women admiring him okay basically his rod fell out okay she found fault also with his attire because if you if you understand our culture, when you go into our culture, the men, when we partied, the men danced together and the women danced together. When we ate, the men ate together and the women ate together. All right. When we were at, you know, uh, festivals and parties and stuff like that, it was ordered to it. The men didn't go over and dance with the women. And I have the uh, facts to prove that. OK, we all you got to do is go into ancient customs. So David was so happy he was dancing among the women. And they were like, oh, ooh. and she got jealous and she found fault with his attire. Perhaps his gymnastics left him immodest at times. Basically, his 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 rod fell out when you go into the story. Or perhaps she simply found his chosen wardrobe priestly rather than royal garb demeaning. In any case, when he returned home, they argued the argument never really ended. All right, so David put an order out that, you know, she would be locked away and childless, which is a shame to a woman back then, implying an end to their intimate relations over this argument. Damn. All right, and then David, what? He prepared, he was preparing a temple. All right. Got to read this as well. 
All right, again, this is a history lesson, and you can read what we just read in 2 Samuel 6, 1 Chronicles 13, 15, and 16. All right, and we're going to finish it off here with the preparations of the temple, and we'll get some other precepts and end it off. If you're not about the history, you can just turn the video off. All right? Go listen to somebody yell, that's right, loud as hell. Preparations for the temple. Okay? By this time, David really had to fight because all of the heathen were beat down. Having built an empire that dominated the region, he, he himself had a luxury palace, and it bothered him that the Lord didn't have a proper temple. All right? Remember, all right, as Moses, he, he had a tabernacle built. Okay? And he would build the temple. So he wanted to build a temple. Okay? It says the Ark of the Covenant was housed in a tent. Okay? David consulted his prophet friend, Nathan, who advised him to go ahead with his intention to build the Lord a temple. So David had it in his mind that he was going to build a temple to the Lord. The Lord, however, had different plans. He told Nathan to go back and tell David, all right, he was not the one to build a temple. Instead, after David's death, his son would be king in his place, okay? And he would build the temple Furthermore, David's throne would endure forever. Okay, see that? Solomon would build the temple so that what? David's throne would rule forever. And what is David's throne? Dominion and a government out of Jerusalem. Right? See? Forever. Now, if Solomon only established it, okay, for 40 years, Who's going to establish it forever? That's where you get Yahweh Shai who came through that lineage. You can get Matthew, the first chapter. It gives you the lineage. Okay. That is a descendant of David would be king forever. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that king that's going to be king forever of David's lineage? Where can we find that history yet? Huh? Let's go to the book of Matthew 1. Of the fruit of the, your loins, David, I'm going to set up your throne. The genealogy of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? Ha is thus. So we say Yahweh Shai Ha Mashiach. Yahweh Shai the Messiah. Okay? The book of the generation of Yahweh Shai the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. <laughs> Why is he the son of David and the son of Abraham? Anyway, it goes through the, gene the genealogy. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, because it is evident our Lord sprang out of Judah. David was of Judah, which goes back to who? Perez in Genesis 38. Okay, which eventually when you keep reading, it goes all the way up. To Boaz, okay, who ultimately uh, uh, laid with Ruth in the book of Ruth, okay? He redeemed the land, Bethlehem, and he also laid with Ruth, and he begot Jesse. According to prophecy, it will be the root of Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon, who had been the wife of Urias. And when you keep going, all right, through that lineage, all right, on down the line, Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahawashai. See that? So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David into the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon into Hamashiach are 14 generations. <laughs> okay? 144. Anyway, um... Going back here, all right, let's start here again. The Lord, however, had different plans. David had it in his mind, I'm going to build this temple. Because who built the first tabernacle? Moses. He told Nathan to go back to David and tell him he was not the one to build the temple. Instead, after David's death, his son would be king in his place. 
and he would build a temple. All right. Furthermore, David's throne would endure forever. That is, a descendant of David would be king forever, though David's successor uh, sinned, they would be punished harshly. All right. But as Yahweh Shai, he got it right. You see, Solomon sinned, but as Yahweh Shai, he got it right. Okay. And this is the son of the Most High, okay, on earth. Right? He failed as Adam, he failed as Yahweh Shai. I mean, he failed as uh, Solomon, but as Yahweh Shai, he got it right. That's why it says in Romans 5, through one man's sin, we all became sinners. Because you got to think, through through Adam's fall, we, we were through. And through after Solomon's fall, all right, we just been into captivity until this day. We haven't been together, all right, as all 12 tribes. All 12 tribes are being gathered back now in preparation for Yahweh Shai to come and set up the throne of David again. All right. And 100 percent righteousness. All right. David was thrilled to have this excellent promise of God. Still, he couldn't make himself stand by while the Lord had no temple, though he was not permitted to build the temple. He could have prepared for its construction. OK, he applied his considerable wealth and influence to the project. Workers dressed stone of masonry, vast supplies, cedar logs, all right, they're imported and put into storage. Large amounts of gold, silver, and bronze were on his hand. Architectural plans were drawn up, okay? Furnishings were designed, staffings uh, planned, workers were recruited, donations solicited, Okay? All throughout this process, David inspired and instructed people to be faithful to Yahweh, enthusing them with sermon about God's greatness and their great privilege of being his people. OK, and David gave Solomon that blueprint. All right. To build that temple. Where is that in the scriptures? Let's uh, get it real quick. Uh, OK. <clears> OK. <throat> OK, the, 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 here it is. The first tabernacle we had where the Ark of the Covenant lay was built by Moses. All right. And the most high. All right. Showed him through his angel the pattern to build that one. OK, and here in First Chronicles, the 28th chapter. OK, in 11, then David gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch and the houses thereof and the treasuries thereof and the upper changers thereof in the inner palace thereof in the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit so by the spirit the lord revealed it to him again because david is moses okay of the courts of the house of the lord and all the chambers round about of the treasuries of the house of god and the treasuries of the dedicated things all right and this is heavy that all right as peter OK, that's the the uh, the rock on which the church would be built. OK, because that's the same spirit. And in the kingdom, he will assume his position as king. All right. Head of the church. But who establishes the church? Yahweh Shai. All right. And read Psalm 72. All right. If you don't understand that <laughs> and see what you get from that. I have lessons on it. It says. Also for the course of the priest, the Levites, and so forth. So David gives Solomon the blueprint to build the temple. Solomon has it built. Okay. And for 40 years, we as Israelites, okay, all 12 tribes, okay, dwelt in unity, eating and drinking and being merry. Okay. All 12 tribes. After Solomon's sin, OK, let's finish this. It said when David's uh, son, King Solomon, eventually undertook the construction, he was so well supplied, trained and aided with expert help that the complete temple was admired throughout the region. You can read that. Second Samuel seven, first Chronicles 17, 22, 28 and 29. Then you go to David's decline. OK, Amnon's crime, Absalom's crime and then just complete hell. Because David made a mistake. All right. But the mercy of David 
was ultimately Solomon, and we seek to receive the mercy of David. Okay? That's what we're fighting for. And the mercies of David, all right, is ultimately Yahweh Shai. Okay, covering your sins, all right, and building the temple. Okay? And what you couldn't, you know, do, <laughs> he does it. All right, now let's get the book of Amos 9. In 11, the restoration of Israel, which that's promised throughout all the Bible. That's why when you get Jeremiah, let's get Jeremiah 30. Bishop Melchizedek, you, you need to shut your ass up. All right? And the rest of you, because you do sound stupid. You sound uh, uh, off. The spirit ain't with you. You're just mad trying to figure out a way to get your lick back. But in the process, you're, you're, you're making stuff up. And you're really, you're destroying the, the scriptures, man. You're tripping. Okay? Deliverance from captivity promised. Okay? Verse 30 and 3, it says, For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. You see that? We're going to go back to that land. Okay? And these are the words the Lord spake concerning Israel and Judah, because after Solomon split, Israel and Judah, all right, separated. Okay? It was friction, broken. So that's why the Lord says here, Amos 9 and 11, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, the differences between the tribes. And will raise up his ruins and build it as in the days of old. So going back to that guy's statement. That the, 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 the tabernacle of David has nothing to do with Yahweh kingdom. It's just something in the scriptures concerning the southern kingdom and those who listen to David. You, 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 man, <laughs> you're in heavy violation. And your understanding of the Bible is, is small. And don't try to come on to the uh, comment boards under a different name saying, well, I didn't mean it like that. No, nigga, you said it. And that's the problem with you disrespectful niggas. Okay? You're just jumping and talking all of this garbage to men who've been laboring in his word for you to have a chance to be laboring through the spirit. Okay? Keep your foot. Okay? And these different niggas who get kicked out, you don't know why they got kicked out. You're just looking at their videos, listening to their stop story and those lies they're telling. You try to try to make it seem like they were so misused and done wrong. But them niggas was partying in every damn week when they was in the camp, having a ball, grilling, listening to trap music, partying, hitting backflips, dancing. Now they get kicked out. Oh my man, <laughs> nigga, you was the you was the most example of liberty in the GMS. But now you get kicked out, and we the worst niggas ever, and we didn't show you no love. <laughs> but go ahead with your keep keep with your narrative, man. The Lord knows what's true, and that's why you niggas ain't amongst us, cause you ain't right. And the whole time you was eating that chicken, you had these particular thoughts in your head that you're now spewing out on the comedy. You wasn't man enough to say it when you was amongst us. So all of you niggas who going and wiggling around following these losers and these, these, these weak-ass arguments, you all are going to be destroyed right along with them. And Bishop Melchizedek is one of them. Amos 9 and 11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old. <laughs> and niggas, King David, <laughs> everybody's an expert on King David. While, while Solomon ruled, King David was in the spirit world. How about that? <laughs> He wasn't alive. 
Okay? And the spiritual temple is being built now. Okay, and when it's all said and done, we'll see who David is. We'll see. We believe through faith who we say it is. You believe who you say it is. But we know that according to the scriptures, he's going to be raised up. Okay, let's get that. What's that in Ezekiel 30? Let's get it. And see, this is what a lot of you Israelites really don't understand what you're a part of <laughs> what's happening in front of you. You don't really have respect for it on that level. Let's get Ezekiel. Damn. Yeah, David is mentioned a lot, right? Yep, Ezekiel 34. I think this is the one. When the Lord sets us back up. This is one of them, but this ain't the one I'm talking about. Um. Ezekiel 34 and 23, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Okay? And we know, according to prophecy, when you go to Nathan's message from the Most High, it was David's descendant. Okay? That was ultimately going to establish this all forever. Okay? NLT, Psalms 30, 132 and 11. The Lord swore an oath to David with the promise he will never take back. I will place one of your descendants on your throne. Okay, so when we're reading about David being established in prophecy, all right, you still got to take into effect the, the, that ultimately is going to be someone who comes through his loins ultimately that's going to be the one that's going to fulfill this all. The scripture I'm looking for is it Jeremiah. Hold up. Yep. Jeremiah 39. Oh, we were just reading Jeremiah 30, right? Concerning Judah and Israel coming back together. Jeremiah 30 and 9. Let's get the point. But they shall serve Yahweh their God and David their king. Whom I will raise up to them. See? So it's promised he's going to be raised up. Okay? We know there's various scriptures where men, all right, uh, are going to be raised up out of their graves. That's prophecy. Okay? Let's get Isaiah 26. Let's start at 19. Okay? Thy dead man shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs. All right. And the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into my chambers. And shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be passed over. So before we're beamed up, particular men are going to be raised from the dead. When, how, we don't know. But we believe the report because even when Yahawashai died, <laughs> and we know this is going to bug y'all out. See? Nigga got cut the whole video, but he going to come to this part. See? Retarded. When Yahweh was uh, 
gave up the ghost. It says the graves were open, Matthew 27 and 52, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see at that day, all right, ultimately how that all plays out. But we know that according to this prophecy, Amos 9 and 11, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. That means all 12 tribes are going to be brought together. Okay, and that's happening starting here in Babylon, a great in the various different captivities where we're being raised up. OK. All 12 tribes are here in Babylon, the great, not just Judah. Again, Jeremiah, the 30th chapter or Jeremiah, the third chapter. Real quick says what? Jeremiah 30 or Jeremiah 3. In 18, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north. All right. To the land I have given them for an inheritance to your fathers. OK. And this this America, Babylon, the great. This is the new Egypt. This is the land of the north. But we also know, according to other prophecies, that he's also going to get the other tribes that are scattered. All right. Wherever they be. It's just that this is going to be the new exodus. So the Lord thy God will raise up the tabernacle of David, man, that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the, possess the remnant of Edom. OK, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith Yahweh that doeth this. OK, so all of those heathen lands that were conquered and dominated by David at that time. OK, we're going to get it all back. All right. And it's the name of Yahweh that this will all be done is. OK. And we're going to put you heathen in captivity as this is re uh, reading. OK, behold, the days come, said the Lord, where the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall melt. OK, a government is going to be established and I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. And I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord. OK, so after Solomon split, we know that the southern kingdom remained in the land, but the northern kingdom left the Assyrian captivity and came over to the Americas. All right. And then we went through our ups and downs. You know, Josiah was the last king of Judah who sat on the throne of David that did right after that. It was just, you know, puppet leaders and wicked Jake. OK. And then, you know, from the Babylonian captivity, we went into, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the the medial Persian. We rebuilt the temple. OK. That was uh, sacked. OK. Then the, 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 the Greeks came in and took down a temple. We had fights, you know, to get it back. All right. And then at the time of Yahweh Shai, the Roman Empire. OK, he gathered the 12, which that was the beginning of the tabernacle of David being built. Then the Gentiles came in and then prophecy of Rome revived where the Lord would eventually send his son to deliver us. But a spiritual temple was being built. OK. And the Lord has ordained, all right, that the tabernacle of David be built as it was before, but in even greater fashion. Let's get Isaiah 58. <laughs> Whoo. Isaiah 58. And 12. And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. The restore a path to dwell in. And that's happening right here. It's going to be fulfilled when the Lord sends his son back because that temple, that tabernacle of God is with men will be fulfilled and beautified as we are beamed up into those chariots. OK. So. Again, the reunion of Judah and Israel, Ezekiel 37 and 15. All right. 
This is what's happening here in America as the prophets are preaching this word. The dry bones are being awakened. But what is it for? A reunion of Judah and Israel. All right, which is the tabernacle of David. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're out there with the 12 tribe sign, as it says here. And the, 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 you would take a stick and write Judah and his companions. And you would write uh, Ephraim and his companions. That's the 12 tribes. You would write it on the stick. Okay. And join them one to another on the stick. And they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, What will thou show us what thou meanest by this? So the people, as we're preaching and prophesying, people will come up to us and ask, well, what does this mean? What does this 12, what does this uh, sign mean? What do you mean I'm Judah? What do you mean I'm Issachar? What do you mean I'm Ephraim? What, what does that mean? All right, what are we going to say unto them? Say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and all the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I will put them even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in my land. So the Lord is going to take us, all right, and the sticks wherein thou writest, meaning we're going to write something on a particular stick, which that word stick means wood, which paper is wood, but we have the 12 tribes chart, okay? When you write, they should be in thine hand before their eyes. So they're going to be looking at you teach, okay? Prophesy. As the dry bones get awakened through the preaching of the word and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone. And I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king unto them. OK, and they shall be no more two nations. All right. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms. All right. And we know. It's going to be King David, okay? But who's establishing that throne according to the prophecy given unto him by Nathan, his son, okay? Goodness gracious. Psalm 72. The reign of the righteous king, a psalm for Solomon. Now, David wrote this psalm. Listen, give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge the people with righteousness and the poor with judgment. Okay. Verse four, he shall judge the poor of the people and shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Solomon didn't do that. Remember, he didn't even have to fight a war. This is speaking of a future prophecy, man. He's going to save the children of the needy, the son of the king, which if you can receive it, Solomon came back as Yahweh Shai. That's why he was beaten with those stripes. He, he paid for what he did as Adam. He paid for what he did as Solomon. Okay? But he got it right and was fully obedient. And notice he left those women alone. Again, Romans the fifth chapter says what? Romans 5 and 17, for by one man's offense, death reigned by one, and death has reigned since Adam and since the fall of Solomon. We've been se uh, uh, separated, okay? But through the Spirit, Yahweh Shai got it right so that prophecy can be fulfilled and he can send us down the Holy Spirit so we can be gathered, all right, in this time, okay? And after the time of the book of Acts, okay? It says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one how much more all right uh they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one okay therefore all right by one yahweh Hamashiach. therefore as by one offense all right and of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation the sons of god we've constantly fell and suffered from the fall of adam We've constantly been in captivity after the fall of Solomon. But through the righteousness of Yahweh Shai came the free gift of the Holy Spirit upon all men, the elect, unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one many shall be made righteous. But anyway, 
that's a whole nother uh, history, a whole nother lesson. The point was made, okay? And I'll put this link in the description box if I can remember. If not, ask on the comment board if you want it. But the uh, website is uh, vtaide.com. And when you go to this, um, it gives you a chart of the kings. Okay, so after Solomon, okay, the kingdom was split in two. Okay, you have the kings of Judah and you have the kings of Israel. If you notice, only Jehu of the kings of Israel did okay. All right, but of the kings of Judah, Asa, Yahweh Shapat, Uzziah, Jotham, Hezekiah, and Josiah did good. The rest were complete off. There was even a wicked woman by the name of Athaliah who forced her way to the throne for a minute. All right, but the, they put her to death. And what did she do when she got the throne? She tried to kill all of the kings so that no man could sit on the throne. Okay, so you read about Athaliah. But anyway, you should love your history as I do. Hopefully y'all were edified. All right, and uh, I'm going to finish this video because the crazy part is after hearing this slip up, I didn't even get to finish the video. So I'm going to go finish this beautiful video and, and block Bishop Melchizedek. Okay? You 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 go. Why, stop coming to our comment board. Go over there, all right, to those uh, other guys and learn from them. Right? Because all you're going to learn is about how GMS ain't shit. Let's see how that works out for you. The whole nation go be gathered under under a doctrine of just GMS ain't right. Because y'all ain't got nothing else to talk about. You can't preach the word. It's not in you. That's why you can't prophesy. All right? So on to the next, man. Shalom.